Hey guys, we've got three short stories for you today. Hope you enjoy and we'll see you at the end of the video. A little lonely at uni. As a last resort, attend the local body odour exchange <laughs> forum. <laughs> the Gamers Club. All the current sessions are full, so I was told that a new session was starting today. A basic Pathfinder game. Begin making my character while I wait. Average half-orc druid. GM arrives. GM is scruffy, half-Asian, wearing a black kimono. Since the date is not October 31st, I'm already regretting my decision to attend, but I have already committed. GM says that everyone else should be showing up soon. They don't. And while we wait, he will give me a quick rundown of the setting. 30 minutes of lore, with key features like The gods have all died, all races are allies except elves, and there is no form of religion. I feel ill. The GM explains my backstory. Nice. That's when you know it's going to be good. I live in a rural society to the west that had no religion but fears demons, which attacks sometimes at night. Okay. <laughs> Sounds very Oni to me. Very Oni like to me. However, everyone I knew died because of the new demons, faceless, grey, tentacled beast that. What? Oh my god, he's put in <gasps> tie into it. Oh, faceless, grey, tentacled beasts that combine living flesh into beasts. <laughs> okay. Alright, whatever you do. I mentioned how that sounds similar to the Eldrazi, as I love Magic the Gathering. GM gives me an annoyed look, pick related, and explains very sternly that this is his own idea. After some waiting, only one other player shows up, and a <coughs> man I've seen around campus, most notably working his job at the food court cleaning tables. However, he did not wait for people to finish. He would insist they move their plates around so he can clean their table. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute shot move right there. Has made the most generic wizard possible. Blue cloak and cap with stars and everything. Start at the sheriff's office. Sheriff is introduced as a f***ing giant black demon. I thought the orc doesn't like demons. Giant black demon greets me warmly and extends a hand for a handshake. Because of my explained backstory, I do not shake the demon's f***ing hand and insist that I'm just looking for work. GM looks at me visibly bewildered that my character did not like his DM player character. And every NPC in the encounter would remark how edgy I was. That's something I think we always fall into, though. Everyone always assumes it's a DM player character if it's an NPC and they don't like. Yeah. It, it does feel like that's just a generic insult now at this stage, yeah. though. After being ridiculed for role-playing at a depth similar to mediocre poon, we're given our job. I thought that was a standard <laughs> role-playing game, uh, was that level of acting. We have been given warrants and the temporary statuses of marshals in order to investigate an elf woman's manor across town, who is suspected of aiding bandits. I asked the demon to give us horses so that we can travel there quickly. A <coughs> guy speaks up for the first time. That isn't true. The first time he spoke was to tell me that I didn't have to do an orc voice because that's odd to do in an RPG. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so funny? <laughs> he... <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. He tells me that if we just go to her house and try to enter it, we are breaking the law and we have to sneak there. Sneak. Three miles. Like a wizard and a druid full on crouching and rolling three miles. This was his plan. What? That sounds like an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Explains that we are marshals and have warrants to search her house and in fact we are the law in the first place. But what if we get caught? Will we go to jail? After an argument similar to, no, I'm Dirty Dan, trying to explain his confusion on the basics of law, the GM gets agitated and just tells us we make it there no problem. Half trying to work with a Tismo, the wise. <laughs> a Tismo, the wise, I can Half trying to work with a Tismo, the wise, I say we can wait until night in front of our manor park, then break in. To try and break the tension building in the room, I explain that I lay down my leathers and begin brewing tea, and invite the wizard to take a rest with me for the remainder of the day. I sh** you not. With the most spurgy voice I have ever heard, he exclaims, That, that is the worst freaking idea I have ever heard. What if people think we're a couple or gay? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Chris Chan, calm down. Calm down. I am pale in the face, and the GM just takes a deep sip of his monster. <laughs> Autism of the Wise ends up taking a level of fatigue, as he chooses to stand specifically 10 feet away from me for 8 hours until it was dark. We approach the locked door of the manor, and I ready myself to break it down. 
but anon we will get arrested. The GM puts his head down. Ignoring him, I smash the lock and enter the house. Autismo gets angry that we cannot retcon that action, so he asks if we can cast Prestidigitation to fix the lock. The GM does not care at this point and just allows it, as we have been playing for nearly an hour and a half. For the rest of the session, Prestidigitation is his favourite spell. Oh, because he's a cleaner. Oh, oh yeah. Because he's a cl- yeah. Because he oh that that would make a lot of sense now. I mean, I wish I had Prestidigitation when I was a kitchen porter. <laughs> They make my life so much easier. <laughs> we end up encountering a bandit inside the house who assaults us. As I beat him with my great staff, Autismo keeps casting web over and over again. Even though we explain the effect does not stack. He might break free, he says over and over again as he uses the last of his spells that day. What? Eventually we win, and as I solve the plotline, Autismo literally begs the GM to cast Press the Digitation to quote Clean up all the blood and damage and webs and our footprints in the house. GM says no. (laughs) Okay then, I do that myself and see if the bandit has left any of his clothes around so we can take it and hide it so no one knows anyone was here so we won't get in trouble. GM is dumbfounded. We both try to remind him that we are the fucking law. After Alan Tutorials does all of what he says, taking only a couple of hours, we leave with enough incriminating evidence. GM has given us a compass described as when you hold it, it points you to where the bandits are. Oh my god. Nice. I believe at this point the GM is sick of Atismo's grand schemes and my reluctance to follow the GM's railroad. The game just slogs on from there, with every encounter becoming an argument to the point where the GM just packed up and said that was the end of the session. GM was also visibly upset that we couldn't solve any of his puzzles with all of my passing checks resulting in, you have no idea. (laughs) Nice. I believe the final straw was when Autismo asked the dumbest f***ing question. I sh** you not. He asked this. GM, can I use prestidigitation to bend the light of the sun into my eyes and then reflect it across the land so my eyes can be telescopes? No. (laughs) I have no words. I have no words, Diggs. I have no words at all. Be honest with you. Now, I don't really think it was the DM's fault to a certain extent. No. To a certain extent. I just don't think it was a good, good It was just a bad mix. group. Yeah. The bad group mix, bad group dynamics. Yeah. Um, the DM just was probably me- mediocre and Autismo, well, he's called Autismo the Wise. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't really think I, need a, I don't really think I need to go in any no. more into that. <laughs> hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is brought to you by Neckbeardia's 3D printed models. Go ahead and check out the eBay store down below. We have tons and tons of really cool looking models. We've got it all from orcs, dwarves, the lizards and fish people. And yes, most of the sets you can get some big bitty bitches in with them. (laughs) And honestly, they're our biggest sellers. Yeah, by far. Yeah. All the models are printed and processed by us and it is by far the best way to help us out to do what we do. So go ahead and check them out below and just... Just look at this lizard lady with titties. She got big titties. <laughs> look at the titties! <laughs> Travelling through dungeon crypt of some moon god to get magic MacGuffin, party gets split by door trap. So it's just me, sorcerer, and the rogue. There's also a barbarian and a bard. My character is 18. In hindsight, a mistake. The rogue is 25. We're all playing females. Hey, you know what? The second they put it, we're all playing females. You know where this is going. (laughs) Bingo cards at the ready, boys. Yeah, come on. Come out to a large room with a thick cat lady just chilling on a raised platform in the middle of the room. Sphinx. Greetings, travellers. Would you like to play a game with me? Know that time itself will look down on you for answering incorrectly. What is always old and sometimes new? Never sad, sometimes blue. Never empty, but sometimes full. Never pushes, always pulls. Me, a dumbass. Oh, I know this one. It's a man. What? How does that make sense? I have no idea. (laughs) I'm horrible with riddles, be honest with you. The Sphinx chuckles as a pink light surrounds my character and she begins to shrink. DM. Rogue, you see the sorcerer fall to your knees and seemingly disappear as her clothing fall into a pile. The Sphinx jumps down from her platform and paws through the clothing, revealing sorcerer reduced to a two-year-old. Rogue. Oh shit, okay, okay. Sphinx. So cute. Now would you like a turn? 
Or are you cutting your losses? Rogue. No, no, I'll take a guess. Rogue is white as a sheet as she picks me up, but suddenly has a flash of inspiration. Rogue. Is it aging? Me, frantic. When is aging blue? The Sphinx chuckles again as a pink light envelops the rogue and she starts shrinking. Rogue is suddenly struggling to hold my weight as she is reduced to a seven year old. Neither of us have the balls to make another guess. Sphinx. Well, feel free to stay a while. At which point we cut back to the other half of the party. Eventually they find their way to the Sphinx room. Barbarian breaks down the door and comes in to see seven year old Rogue in just a shirt and a two year old me with my elegant robes ripped up to form a cloth diaper, snuggled up and napping with a sphinx. <laughs> Barbarian. What the hell is this? The bard barely holding back laughter since she was usually the victim of some light hearted teasing from me and Rogue. The sphinx gives its riddle again. Bard. Thinking. Oh, duh. It's the moon. Sphinx. Damn. That's correct. The door behind her opens. Barbarian. Are you going to turn them back into adults? Sphinx. No, why would I? Barbarian lets out a sigh, picks me up and ties me to your chest. Sphinx. Take care, little ones. The dungeon is a dangerous place for children. It is ruled that I still have all of my mental abilities and enough dexterity and vocal ability to cast spells without much issue. And the rogue was never using much strength to begin with. I spend the rest of the dungeon, and will potentially spend the rest of the campaign, in a sling. Either getting into the melee with the barbarian, casting buffs or hanging back with the bard. Rogue goes pantless for the rest of the adventure and gets fitted for new gear when we get back to town. Bard makes a crack about not getting me any new clothing until I'm potty trained again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be more upset if I wasn't so into it. The idea of being cradled by someone for the whole campaign going forward is incredible. Though it has added a complicated element to the budding relationship between me and the barbarian. <laughs> I don't know. That one actually isn't the worst I've came no, across. No, don't get me wrong. It's kind of funny. It is kind of funny, but it's a bit of a Ooh. bullshit move. Not um, turning them back. Yeah, and giving them, like, it is such a thing that but, will affect them. But yet them. again, that can also, later on in the campaign, you know, they find a cure for yeah, it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Also be it, another... There's a lot you could work with there. I don't like the way it's, like, you know, you're permanently... <clears throat> done to your character though yeah. it's kind of a bit, uh, yeah. I don't know I don't know once we had an elf who f***ed one human once and developed this psychotic obsession with bringing him back to life after he died she sort of faded into the background after a while we forgot about her but two campaigns later her research started popping up and this escalated until it turned out that she was basically getting ready to harvest all life on earth to try and bring her pet goldfish back to life by the end of it we were up to our balls in hideous soul-stealing goblin mutants that ate our souls and vomited them back up as peril catalysts for some ancient resurrection ritual. Five f***ing campaigns of fighting this insane elf, motivated by love and heartbreak to destroy the world and overthrow the will of the gods to bring her husband back. Because someone just had to hit on the elf chick. Way to f***ing go, Riley. <laughs> Dick Riley. <laughs> Honestly, I go, this, this could be great to cut out that horny bar group. <laughs> yeah. This is a great idea for it. Dear God, I want to be in your grip. You say that now, but you'd be eating your thumbs by the end of it. It's so enraging to go through these enormously fierce trials and then realise they aren't clever at all. They were just engineered by a woman with infinite time and no sense of proportion. Example. Her research notes were all written in Dwarvish, which was the language of choice for scientific notion. But then apparently she thought, oh hey, someone might read my notes and figure out my plans. Now a sensible person might start writing in code. She destroyed the entire Dwarvish civilization and annihilated their culture. She then invented Esperanto and <laughs> taught it to the humans. Nobody speaks Dwarvish except for her anymore. Fucking unbelievable. This was a whole campaign. Holy Ooh. shit, tell us more. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. The whole affair is just so agonizing from start to finish that it hurts just thinking of it. Like in campaign three, when she introduced a wonder crop that was like a combination between potatoes, wheat and rice. Grew in huge patties, each one of the size of a bowling ball. You could take in five crops a year easily. 
didn't deplete the soil and oh yeah after the 10th year they basically flooded the atmosphere with sentient anthrax hey nice the induced migration inland yay or like in campaign 2 when she tore open the abyss with a huge ring painted with several hundred gallons of her own blood carefully extracted and frozen over the course of decades and used it to suck out the very spirits of entropy and chain them to her will so that she could put out the sun for the 15 minutes she needed to do some stupid uh zig 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 <laughs> best you got. we got no idea what the <laughs> word says no no not because the sun needed to vanish for the alignment herself she just wanted better lighting to see the stars not like she could have just used a telescope or anything every fucking time we ended up dealing with this hideous series of catastrophes and a campaign later, we realised just how trivial the actual motivations behind them were. You really need to invest in a better DM. In his defence, this all started because we forever DM'd him. Not exactly subtle revenge. I mean, at least it's still fun, and while you're playing it, you never notice. But then afterwards, you're left going, Did we just spend six months cock-blocking an elf? <laughs> nice. And the answer is yes. Six months cock-blocking an elf. There was sentient anthrax and bandersnatches involved, sure, but when you get down to it, it was cock blocking an elf. <laughs> I kind of like that concept for a big bad evil guy though. That's, it's almost like... I quite, that's quite fun. <laughs> it's, I, I don't know how best to word it, but it's almost like they're trying to achieve this, but it's more from their incompetence yeah. that evil things happen. Yeah. Like, you know, their, their, their meaning is good, however, the way that they're going about it is just... Stupid! It's it's uh, it's chaotic evil to say the least. Yeah, you yeah. Know? 